As you move into Elm from other languages, especially things like JavaScript or Ruby or the like, where types are not enforced, you may discover JSON encoding is a little bit different. In JavaScript, you generally just say, take a blob of JSON and you call json.parse, and you get a blob of a JavaScript data structure back. Elm is a little different in that it requires encoders and decoders to go between a JSON da data, which you might get from an external source like a server, and on the other hand, internal Elm representation. Now this does mean a little more work up front, but what it does buy you is that you know that the data you get into your application is of the proper shape and form, and the things that you didn't necessarily want, for example, if a format changes on the server, it doesn't corrupt your data, you just get an error message that says, from, from the AJAX call, that says, in proper form of JSON, or something of that nature at any rate. However, it does mean that there's a little more work to building the encoders and decoders. Thankfully, there is a good solution to that. And let me show you how, how to do that. So this is elm.quicktype.io. And it basically lets you take a JSON and convert it into an Elm module that has encoders and decoders. So you, and you can also do it, by the way, with a number of other languages. So you can use C Sharp or Go or C++ or Java or whatever. Um, so that's kind of nice if, if you're using any of these languages. Along with Elm, you can have your types match up. And you can install this from an NPM as well, but this is the web application. So you give it your top level type, Spotify album, over here. And you paste your JSON in here. And this is just one of their pre-examples. And then you give it the module name here. So we can call it Spotify.json. And then you said you want to use an array or a list for things that are array-like um, or list-like. We'll say list. Uh, but maybe you want an array. And then it generates this code. And you see module Spotify exposing, and it exposes some functions, it imports some things, um, as you might see. And then it just creates a whole lot of code here that you can just move into your project as a file. And that will either be the solution you need or at least 90% of it. You may need to fiddle a little bit to get things exactly the way you want it, but you at least have 90% of the app, of the work done by simply adding this imports and adding using this function to decode a JSON. And that is how you can build these things quickly uh, and save yourself a lot of work. So that's how you encode and decode JSON easily in Elm, or at least make the, generate the boilerplate automatically. Now, it may not, again, get you everything you want, but it should at least get you most of the way. Now, if you have questions about how to do other things in Elm, uh, please feel free to leave a comment below and like and share my video. And I produce new videos five days a week, so subscribe to my channel.